scientists, it's PS Science here, and today we're going to talk about waves, in particular longitudinal and transverse waves. Are you ready? So, hmm, waves, you're sitting there and watching this video, and I'm wondering, are you feeling like you're being bombarded with waves? Can you feel waves crashing into you all around? Do you hear waves? It's easy to be reminded of ocean waves because those are the waves that we see most often, but there are many different kinds of waves and there are types of waves and also there are directions in which waves move. And that's what we're gonna focus on today, longitudinal and transverse waves. Like I said, you might be thinking ocean waves when you hear the word waves, but there are many different kinds of waves. The truth is you really are being bombarded with waves. Some of them you can see, the visible spectrum, the light that we can see, but there are also electromagnetic waves that we can't see, and there are heat waves that we can definitely feel, and there are sound waves that we hear. Amplitude and wavelength are ways to measure waves. Amplitude is the distance above or below the flat level. Amplitude. Can you see it above and below that midline? Amplitude. And the wavelength is the distance between the crests of a wave, whether they are above or below that midline. Wavelength, that's a measure of the distance between two crests or troughs. Wavelength, can you see that? But what about longitudinal and transverse waves? Let me show you with a slinky what I mean. So I've got my slinky here and I attached it to the doorknob. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stretch it out, but I'm gonna keep some of the coils in my hand and then I'm going to release the coils, which will be releasing energy through the length of the slinky and you can watch the energy travel in a wave through the slinky but what kind of a wave longitudinal or transverse let's observe here we go one two three now of course i'm going to do it in slow motion this is a great chance to use my slow mo cam So how would you describe the way the energy moved through the slinky? Could you see it go from one end to the other and then bounce back, back and forth through the slinky? Well, let's model a different kind of wave. Let's see if you can observe the difference between the two and then make a guess which one is longitudinal and which one is transverse. So here I'm working again in slow motion and I've got the slinky on the floor parallel to some lines. Think of them as being the midline. And can you see how the slinky curves side to side? How was the wave energy moving through the slinky? Were you able to observe the way the energy moved through the slinky in a transverse wave and a longitudinal wave? Could you tell the difference between them? I'll give you a hint. This is the way that I remember longitudinal versus transverse. Longitudinal, that word begins with L-O-N-G, long, longitudinal. How would that hint at the way the energy moves in a longitudinal wave? Let's take a look at a diagram and then let's get to building our wave machine. In a transverse wave, the particles are moving perpendicular to the direction of the wave. And in a longitudinal wave, the particles are moving parallel to the direction of the wave. Let's think about it another way with the slinky. In a transverse wave through the slinky, the slinky might have looked like it was going up or down or side to side. So here it is again in slow motion. How is the slinky moving? In the longitudinal wave, the energy was going back and forth along the length of the slinky. 
An interesting thing about waves is that they transfer energy from place to place, but they don't transfer matter. How are you doing in there with the longitudinal and transverse waves? Are you getting an idea of the difference between them? Are you ready to put some waves in action? Let's start our wave machine. I'm starting at the end first. This is the finished product. Just a little snippet of it in slow motion so you see what we're going to be doing. You're going to need some wooden skewers and some tape. You can use regular duct tape, which is about two inches wide. You could use this orange tape, which is about one inch wide. It's up to you which you think is the better width. You'll have to play around with it a little bit. You're also going to need gumdrops or gummy bears. And you're going to take each skewer and poke it into a gumdrop. Be careful not to poke the skewer into your fingers. And you're going to put one on each end of the skewer. So you're going to end up with at least 10 skewers like this. And then you're going to stretch a piece of tape between a chair and the wall, between two things, as long as it's nice and taut. You might want to have a helper with that so you can make sure that it is nice and tight across between whatever you're using. And then with the sticky side of the tape up, you want to secure the skewers evenly spaced to the tape. Evenly spaced is really important. And then you want to take another piece of tape and place it exactly over the first piece of tape so that the sticky sides are together, securing the skewers in between them. You'll end up with a whole bunch of skewers that look like this. You should start with at least 10. Here it is from a different angle. And make sure your tape is nice and tight. You can see here that my tape isn't really tight enough for it to work correctly. Pull it tight. And then to start your wave, you're going to lift up on one of the skewers and watch the wave ripple through the length of the tape. You have to make sure that the tape is really tight in between the two things. It might be fun to try to make a miniature version too using toothpicks and miniature marshmallows. Of course, if you try this, you're also going to have to fold your tape or they do sell really thin, skinny tape, like washi tape. You might want to give it a try, scientists. See what happens. How'd you do with your wave machine, scientists? And don't think I'm not on to you. I know you're thinking, mmm, that was a delicious wave machine. I think you'll find that if you're pretty precise about how far apart you space the skewers and how evenly you place the gummies or the marshmallows on the end of the skewers, you get a smoother wave motion. It reminds me of when you see a crowd of people in a stadium and they're doing the wave, right? If the timing is right, the wave is a lot more fluid. So you might want to get some help if you want to readjust your measurements. Anyway, that's it for today. Transverse and longitudinal waves. Keep investigating, scientists. See you next time. Okay, scientists, thanks for watching. Did you enjoy that lesson? Subscribe below to see more fun science videos. You can also become a member of PS Science on Patreon to support what we're doing. See you next time.